Hey, everybody. Good evening. Good morning. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to another live edition of Mafia Roundtable. And boy, it is hot in here. First off, before I even start, I missed uh, thanking somebody yesterday on a super chat. Tony, I, I'm not even going to try to pronounce your last name. You know who I mean. I apologize. I didn't see it. It was probably, like you said, when I was going back and forth. Who knows? Uh, sometimes they fly by quick. But no, with the super chats, they stay up. So just my bad, probably distracted with everything. So um, first off, I want to thank everybody for all the um, well wishes of Fluff Fluff. She's no longer with us. Had to put it down today. Very emotional day. So I'm not even going to talk about it. So otherwise, I just get too upset. Um, everybody, today we'll talk about Sal the Ironworker. Go into when I met him, what I thought of him, uh, type of guy he was. What had happened, I had a little, I don't even think I had, I didn't have an altercation with him. I actually met him down in the city um, to go over something, an issue, and I'll go into that later. And then what happened with Michael Nose and Vinny afterwards, which, um, folks, in that life, you have to, have to, and I prided myself on this to when you speak or you pass a message that somebody said something, you need to be extremely, extremely accurate. And, um, you know, it's just you have to be accurate when you speak. Um, I'm not sure if Maddie will be in here uh, reading the questions. If not, I'll do it. Um, it's just a bad day. It was tough coming home. So um, also, everybody, go to egvodka.com, order your vodka. We're in 44 states. I know there's about seven states. We Ohio happens to be one of them. We'll work on it. The controlled states are just harder to get into. We'll see what liquor stores can dispense in those uh, cities, and we'll make it happen. But it's 100% organic, certified organic, gluten-free, excellent, best-tasting vodka on the market by far. We beat absolute in a taste test four out of five times. Not absolute, gray goose. Gray goose. So, uh, folks, it's unbelievable. We're premium vodka price right. So go to egvodka.com, order it today. And uh, we're working on some liquor stores going in. We are in some liquor stores in the state of Florida. I think also in Arizona and California. So, um, the, but very few. So anyway, um, in a little while, I'll, when we get some more viewers, I'll do a toast for my fluff fluff. Let her rest in peace, no longer suffering, which is a good thing. That helps me thinking about, um, you know, all the pain she was with her mouth. We tried the Chinese herbs, uh, holistic medicine. And um, even the vet said her life force, her energies were low. Uh, and I knew that, too, because usually I told the vet when they were poking and prodding her, she didn't bite you. Because she was, whoo, she would have bit scratch with her two little fangs she had left. She would have looked to bite the crap out of her. She said, no, she didn't. All she did was give a little growl. So we knew it was uh, an end. So um, and it was funny, too, this morning. Set them up at 3 a.m. Tried feeding her. She didn't want to eat. Gave her some pain medicines. I'm doing my thing. I have to run upstairs for something. And I'm in the bathroom. All of a sudden, boom, the door comes flying open. It was her. And she's just sitting there looking at me, coming by me. So, like, you know, it was sad, but, you know, I didn't want to see her suffer anymore. <clears throat> so with that, um, we'll go into the story. I meet Sal, the iron worker. I was an act. Was I an acting? No, at this. Yeah, we were both acting captains, met each other. Um, later on when Vinny became boss, I was official captain bumped up. He was still an acting captain for Patty D. Filippo's crew in the Bronx. Um, uh, Michael Mancuso was then bumped up to, I don't even think Mike. Yeah, no, I'm sorry. At first, Michael Mancuso was Patty D. Filippo's acting captain. And then when Tony Green, Urso got locked up. Uh, Vinny became the acting boss of the Bonanno crime family. Vinny bumped Michael Mancuso up to an acting underboss. And Vinny made uh, Sal the Ironworker the acting captain for Patty Filippo's crew. 
Uh, word came in from the street. Joe Messina said to bump me up an official captain, and that's what happened. So I think that was all part of Joe's plot to uh, really um, his ace in the hole. But who knows? Anyway, with that, I met um, Sal the Iron Worker. Nice guy, liked him. We hit it off. I felt we hit it off. Then the second time, uh, he sends word, I'd like to meet you. There's an issue. There was an issue in Queens with a guy around me, Joey Gambini. Uh, that was Anthony Aiello's cousin, Ace, Ace's cousin. So I said, all right. We set up dinner. We met. Um, I'm not sure if I brought Joey with me. I think I brought Ace with me. Joey could have been with me. Uh, and I forgot the place, and I'm trying to remember. But it was in the city, um, I want to say, maybe in the 90s. It was further up in the city. It wasn't downtown. And I went there a few times. I actually used to go there pretty frequent. One of the times I was there, I was with uh, a young lady that I was seeing. Her name was Luce Whitney. So for those of you who don't know, and I'm not even going to tell you, Luce Whitney. So let's see if anybody knows who she is. Well, who she, yeah, who she is, actually. I can't say was she. I don't think she passed away. Uh, but aside from that, we meet up at this place. And downstairs, you could smoke cigars. They had... Um, all little tables down there. So we're sitting downstairs having a few drinks and Sal the Iron Worker brings to my attention that there was an issue in one of the social clubs in Queens with Joey Gambini. Joey said something, got loud with the guy, a little obnoxious. He tried saying Joey was all messed up that night, high. And uh, so when I brought it to Joey, um, yeah, I think Joey was... No, he, he wasn't there. Um, but I did mention it to him. This was the word that was sent to me before we sat down. And I asked Joey. Joey said, dumb. Never happened. Here's what happened. Yes, I did get loud. I wasn't messed up. The guy owes me money. And I went in there. I want my money. So he's not wrong. So when I met with Sal, we went back and forth. And um, in a nice way, it wasn't confrontational. I'm going to stick up for my guy. Because I know the way people are. Sometimes people are soft in that life. And when you challenge them, you go at them, they want to make, we call it a budel out of it. Like it's a big thing. And it was nothing. The guy just figured he knew Sal the Iron Worker didn't care for Joey Gambini, so he knew how to fuel the fire. So with that, we went back and forth. I assured him that wasn't the case, that didn't happen. His, the, way it ha the way I was told it happened. And let them work it out. There was no uh, other than if he claimed Joey got loud, does the guy owe him money? Yes. Tell him to pay. Tell him to pay. He has all rights. He's lucky Joey didn't crack him. Well, the guy's around me. Then then he can't crack him. I'll give you that. Uh, is Joey aware of that? He says, oh, no, he's aware. Okay, but tell your guy to pay the money. Because, Sal, you're my friend, I told him. You're my friend. The way you're speaking, then you should go. You're saying he owes him the money. The guy knows, then you should go in your pocket and pay it. I'm, but I'm not telling you that. I'm telling you, if you were in an adversary and he started laughing, he goes, no, I know, I know. And we went back and forth. We're talking about type of work, trying to, and that's that was basically the meeting. We left off good, had some more drinks, laughing. Okay, we have to go out to dinner one night, definitely. Uh, we go out with the wives, the girls, whatever you want to do. And uh, really, we had a good night. I liked him. I liked the rapport back and forth. Sharp guy on his feet, even though they call him a zip because he's from Italy. Um, I happened to like him. He actually came from Canada, too. So, um, you know, good rapport. Everything went well. Okay. Um, after that, and folks, I'm going to somebody remind me in the chat. I forgot to mention something about the George Keogh case. The murder of George Keogh, remind me, because something, as I'm thinking, and, you know, little things you forget, but just to show you, and I'll go into that story. But um, after the few drinks, we uh, we part ways, had a good time, uh, trying to get future business together, create something to make money in the legal, legal aspect. Maybe about 
next day, Vinny asked me how the goats. I said, good. I like him. I like him. Seems like a nice guy. He's fair. I basically gave him the rundown. I gave him the scenario I threw him. Vinny said, good. Good bow. Good bow. Let him know because it shows you know the life. Um, I'm like, no, no. We went really well. I like him. We're playing them. We might even be doing business together. So Vinny's like, good. He makes money. He's an earner. So that's good. And, you know, that's what it's about, trying to utilize all the resources you have in the legitimate world and make money. Uh, that's the way I looked at it. Everything's a hustle. Everybody has their niche. And, you know, sometimes we could expand on our niches. So afterwards, uh, you know, Vinny and I left. Maybe about three days later, Vinny comes up to me. He says, Dom, what the heck? Like, are you kidding me? I'm like, what are you talking about? You threatened Sal the iron worker? I said, Vinny, what are you talking about? And Louis Electric was with me. And Vinny's ripping into me. I'm like, Vinny, are you effing kidding me? Like, who told you this? So right away, he didn't say. So I thought it was Sal the iron worker. I said, you know what? When I see him, I'm going to just crack him. Like, who the F does he think he is? Like, really? Really? No, you know what? I can't crack him. I'm going to berate him. I'm going to ridicule him. And I hope he picks up his hands. I'm going to leave him in the street. Because it got me upset. Like, I started. I was abusing him. I was Just the way he spoke. And when I said that, Vinny turned beat red. And I forgot Louis Electric was there. We weren't alone. If we were alone, he would said, Dom, just calm down. Relax. He said, who the F do you think you're talking to? Who do you think you're talking to? And then I caught it. I said, Vinny, my bad. I apologize. Uh, we're just too close. I'm sorry. I didn't know. I forgot Louis here. Don't ever say that. Like, that's a friend. And he ripped in. I'm like, all right. And then when Louis left, he said, Dom, you know I had to go into you like that. I said, no, I know. It's my bad. You know, I slipped up. I was wrong. He said, and he's shaking his head. He said, don't do that again. Be more cautious because I can't show favoritism here. You know, I'm running the show now. I can't show favoritism. You know, if you do something, I have to get on you, especially in front of other people. And I don't want to. I love you. You know, I said, Vinny, I know. I understand. With that, he told me it didn't come from Sal anyway. It came from Michael. Really? But don't say anything. I'll handle it. Next day, next day, Vinny, we meet up with each other all the time. We meet up, he told me, he says, Dom, I met up with Michael. I went into him. I said, Michael, I told Dominic what was said. So are you sure Sal, the iron worker, said that? Because you know the way Dominic is. He wants to rip it. Next time he sees him, he's going to rip into him. And if Sal says he didn't say that, there's going to be an issue here, Michael. Michael said, well, well, you know, he didn't say it that way. He didn't. Vinny ripped Michael a new asshole. Told him, Michael, you have to be accurate when you speak to me. All this wash woman shit. And that just shows, like, just the caliber of Michael. He shouldn't even be in that position. And uh, and but Vinny told me I ripped him, ripped him a new asshole. Told him I'll knock him down as quick as I put him up. And Michael didn't like that. So that was another resentment that chalked up with Michael. But that just shows the way he was, like, so insecure. Um, to give a message, you're an acting underboss, and you're looking to stir the pot, which wasn't good. So, um, you know, that was one time I had to chalk one up, take a little tongue lashing. But it is what it is. Now, uh, what else do I want to talk about? Oh, with the George Keogh murder. When I told you everybody that in the trunk, oh, I had the rental car. I told everybody when we took the put the body in the trunk, it was my car, my Cadillac. We put the body in the trunk, disposed of it. A little bit of blood took out, cleaned it up, cut the carpet out of the car, got got rid of that that swatch of carpet. When they arrested me. On the, I guess, on the indictment on in the discovery, they said they recovered blood. There was a notation. They recovered blood in the trunk of the rental car. I'm like, these dirty MFs. That was not true. 
um, far from the truth, or they might have pricked their finger to put blood in the car, but the body was never in the car. And back then, you know, sometimes law, enfor law enforcement can be dirty. They can be dirty as, yep. So you do have your good, you have your bad, but that's what happened to me back in the day. They said the body was, or they didn't say the body, I'm sorry. They said they discovered blood. They're waiting for the analysis of the blood to see whose blood it is for the DNA testing at that time. Uh, I think they had the testing that they could say whose blood it was or what type of blood, whatever. But it just shows that's what happens at times. So, folks, for those of you who are just tuning in, we put down Fluff Fluff today. And since we have the vote up like they do in the old days with the gangsters, we're pouring one for Fluff Fluff. Let my wife be upset, but hey, we'll pour a little. That's my fluff fluff. Let she rest in peace on the floor. But we'll clean that up. One of the, ah, no, I'm not even going to let the other animals. And this is for my fluff fluff. What? E.G. Vodka. Hey, E.G. Ah, nice. Clean, smooth. Zero burn. This is a warm bottle. But go to E.G. Vodka.com. Buy your vodka. Vodka today, not baka. Baka. Yeah, that's what it is. Baca. Buy your Baca today. 100% organic. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Hey, she got... Uh-oh. We got Maddie here. She came with a glass, a buy drink, and I just did a toast for Fluff Fluff. Wait, wait, wait. And I poured it on the floor. Like they do on the ground for their homies. <laughs> there you go, honey. That's for you. So, and look, she's pouring it. Look, folks, no ice. That's how smooth this vodka is. I'm telling you, it's really good. Oh, I know, but we're not going to promote somebody else's uh, mixture. But people thank everybody, too, for the comments. Um, I know even on Instagram, uh, the condolences from my beloved kitty cat. But it's part of life. So, um, and that's it uh, today. I'll, no, I'll tell more stories throughout the chats and everything. So let's see what we have. Uh, Yesterday you were asked to move the computer away a little bit. Okay. That's not. It's a way enough. Otherwise, I can't see the chat. Glasses? Fluff Fluff is smoking EG vodka and smoking cigars. Yes. Yeah, no, no. Fluff Fluff's catching mice. <laughs> She's up there. She was a hunter. She came with birds, mice, everything. That, Raccoon, raccoons, rats. 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 Go ahead. Say me too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> she slept with me every night. So. Rest in peace, Fluff Fluff. Thanks. Make a tribute song, rap. For I should do. I, I, you know why I'm going to make a rap song for Fluff Fluff? Hey, did everybody like my rap song yesterday at the end of the, my few bars? I got a lot of bars, trust me. So, um, oh, let's see. Hi, Dom. I enjoyed hearing your experiences and my condolences for Fluff Fluff. Do you know I have any or ever met Larry Mazza? Yes, I met Larry. I like him. Really nice guy. Um, maybe we'll do a show together. We're going to hook up soon, though. I like Larry. He seemed like a real nice guy. If so, do you think you'll do? Yeah. If Larry wants to come on, he's always welcome. We don't live too far from one another, so that would be great. Um, Dom, how'd you learn about these big construction projects? I like to do something like that. Did someone teach you? Actually, yes. A gentleman named Peter Serpico. He was part of Kava Construction. Now he's the CEO of OmniBuild. So the major, major construction company in Manhattan. They build high-rise hotels, renovate around the world. Um, he actually walked me into the bank, showed me, gave me access to his traits. And uh, that's how I started. And I started actually in Local 7, Tile Marble and Terrazzo, doing tile work. And then from there, um, we'll go into the story about what happened with my grandmother. My grandmother had lent me money, and then I was able to buy a house. I kept on flipping it. And that's what I was doing. Um, oh, when somebody asked about uh, talking about the underboss of the Bonanno crime family, it's Johnny Joe. Great guy. Great guy. I have stories with Johnny Joe um, back in the day. I was a kid, so he might not even remember, but we used to party up a storm, and he had a bad dangerous reputation uh back then serious guy but a partier and um i'll tell the story maybe in a few days of 
firebombing a house waiting for the guy to come out to shotgun him, blast him, leave him in the house. So I'll go into that story later on. But uh, great guy, stand up, has a lot of respect on the street. Um, and I like Giant Joe a lot, a lot. He's a, And I'm glad I didn't have anything to tell on him. So uh, I like him. Really good guy. Um, did you read the one with Jeremy? He said, Dom, <clears throat> you a stand-up guy, condolences. Just wondering if you've got any pictures from inside a social club. Uh, no. No, and remember, guys, back then we didn't have uh, cell phones with cameras. And the cell phones I did have, they were mostly throwaways, uh, pages. But I do have old pictures, so I will post some up uh, once I get familiar with this or when the um, film crew comes. I'll have them throw them up on my Friday shows. So you're getting cats are wonderful animals, but you, did you tell them that one of the dogs was crying? Oh, that? yeah. Today when we came home, the big uh, pit bull we have, Beast. One of them. One of them. Um, do you want to tell her or do you want me to tell her? No, but tell the story. Okay, well, give me a chance. Okay. We'll drink your vodka, please. Um, Is that telling me to shut up? <laughs> yes. Hurry up. So, Beast, he has a cone on because when we're not home, he gnaws on everything. Yes. And half the time, he takes the cone off. He knows how to bump into the wall. The thing comes right off of him. So, with that, um, he's walking, and where we had one of her litter boxes, you hear him crying. He started crying, looking that way, crying. So I think he senses she's not here, no more litter box. So, you know, they pick up the animals. But And plus, I was, I'm was i sure he sm could smell it on me. I was holding her when they put her down. She was in my arms. Uh, that's the picture I posted on Instagram. Check it out. And uh, that's it. So, yeah. So. Uh, Dom, did you ever work with other families? Yes, I worked with other families and uh, from getting fun sit downs, business ventures. Yes, I worked with other families. Mike Bauer, keep your head up. Big Mike in Catskill, New York. I know Catskill. I went uh, snowboarding, uh, snowmobiling up there. Beautiful area. Yeah, it's upstate New York. That's nice. Upstate. Um, That's okay. upstate. Close Listen, my wife York. wants to try to say she's from New York when she's from uh, Westchester County. That's not, listen, for the true New Yorkers, that's not New York. Uh, yeah, but that's New York, is, that is not Westchester. No, 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 no. <laughs> Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, Staten Island, Long Island. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we you're upset. Yeah, I educate my ass. So what else um, do we have? Uh, much love from Ze uh, New Zealand. Don, yes, thanks, James. New Zealand in the house. I see India in the house. You should do some meet and greets. You know what? We'll set it up eventually. Um, I'm busy right now. I'm trying to come on every day, put out content, so answer questions. See, Westchester is upstate. Thanks, Sean no, it's Miller. Not. It's yes, Westchester yeah. County. I know she didn't say that. She didn't. She didn't answer know. that question. You yeah, yeah, know. yeah, yeah. You Have you get? You need space. another set of baka. So tonight we're gonna get our drink on, but right now I'm gonna drink water. Try to hydrate it's not a little upstate. bit. You have you have Dutchess County, Westchester County. It's upstate. Stop, Black. stop, please. Hey, Dom, do you know Dominic Eugene? He owns Bronx City Recycling on Yale Avenue. Oh yes, I think I do. It sounds familiar with the recycling. Um, I think I do. Oh, I thought you were drinking. No, I'm not drinking water. Okay. I took I took one swig for her and I poured some on the floor. Oh. Tony, thank you for the super chat. Yes, Tony, got you today. See, I didn't miss you. And we apologize with yesterday. Thank you. Meet or talk or any of the Roy DeMeo gang. You know why I met um, a guy? You said Romeo. I said DeMeo. Oh. You need to. You see, you see Guys, I'm not feeling too well, and she's really bothering me. She's aggravating me. She's going to be joining Fluff Fluff. You're going to see tomorrow. R.I.P. Maddie. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Um. Okay. Yes, the only person I met uh, from there was a guy, Ronnie. I think his name was Ronnie. Homeless guy. Uh, I met him in Allenwood, Pennsylvania. They used to make fun of him. Like he looked like the kiss of death. Like he was dying. And I forgot his last name. So somebody who's up there will mention it. Ryan Brown. Hey, Dominic. Thank you. Thank you for the contribution, Ryan Brown. My She just wants to run it her own way. but And then I get yelled at. 
to not thank in this chat the contribution. Um, no, on here. Oh. Um, hey, Dominic. Bless you. Thank you. Hey, Dominic, with Joey exposing rats, will he talk about his uncle Lawrence cooperating or because? Wait, 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 wait. You have the you have the guy who gave a contribution. You just skipped it. Okay. Dom, if a movie were to be made about you and your life, who would you want to play you and Vinny Bastiano? Um, I think there was talks. We did have something. And I think who they used for me, Ben Affleck? Yeah, I think they had Ben Affleck for me. And Vinny was uh, Paulie Walnuts. No, Paulie from The Sopranos. Uh, I'll go through the – I'll look it up and f figure it out and then get back to you. But I think Ben Affleck was for me. Okay, go ahead. The, your other chat. Your yeah, other. so that was also. Wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Chucky Baby, thank you for the contribution. Uh, you ever meet Vinny Balamente or his kid, Ernie Aiello? No, I never met Vinny. Ernie Aiello, no, never met him. Um, I heard if that they claiming is Michael Mancuso's nephew or cousin, never met him. So. Um, Ryan, hey Dominic, with Joey exposing. Oh, so did I read that? No. Okay. I cut hey you Dominic, off. with Joey exposing rats, will he talk about his uncle Lawrence cooperating, or because he was family, not talk about him? Oh, I don't know. You have to ask Joey that. Hey, hey, Molino, you're going to be talking about your uncle Lawrence that ratted, since you're exposing all the rats. But you know what? It's not a, a reflection on him, that's for sure, if his uncle cooperated. Just like when I ratted, it wasn't a reflection on my father. I did what I did. There's a lot of guys that ratted. It wasn't a reflection on them. All right. So Big G says, hey, Doc, I saw in the chat, if we get an EG bottle, you'll sign it. How do we get a bottle of your signature on it? Um, you, would have to you, would have, you would have to uh, – that's, that's a good question because you can't mail it. Um, we'll figure it out. Let me ask the lawyers how to do it, that it's legal, because I know you can't ship uh, liquor through the mail. So we would have to see. Um, or maybe if you buy it from the liquor store, I'll just, I'll have them send it to me. I'll sign it, return it to them, and they'll send it to well, you. It depends what area. So there's a way. We'll get it done. We'll get it done. Uh, Ryan Brown, thank you for the contribution. Be nice to Maddie. <laughs> she needs to be nice to me. Even though it was her cat, that was my baby. She could fluff, fluff. Kayla was her name. I called her fluff, fluff. I called her shit ball. She followed me around like a, like a puppy dog all around the house. She'd hear my voice. She'd be sleeping. All of a sudden, here she comes. And then I sit on the couch. I had to put little steps there. So we have a couch in the kitchen by the fireplace. All of a sudden, she'd run up the steps and stretch her legs out like it was comical. Uh, we have another contribution. Hey, Doc, from... you ever meet Vinny's father? If he was alive, I don't think you would be. Yes, I did meet Vinny's father, Jerry. Nice guy. Um, you know, very good, nice guy. For all the holidays, he would come Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's Eve. He was always there at the house with all the kids, all his family. Very nice guy. Well, most, 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 most. How do you know well, Mon we'll How do you know? How do you know Montreal officially broke off with the Bananos? If they did, are their members reassigned Recognize. to make recognized as made members in New York? Independence, a new family. They broke off after Vinny got arrested. I was in. Uh, Sal, the iron worker, actually was up there, and I forgot to tell him the story. Sal, the iron worker, wound up getting deported back to Canada where they killed him at the end of the day up there. Um, he was found shot to death across the lake, a pond, whatever it was. It was in the, I think, winter time. He was found, his body was found in the snow. But um, <clears throat> uh, there was no, I don't know the particulars of it. But um, yeah, that's when they broke off from us. But Sal, the iron worker, did go up there, collected 50000 for Christmas because Baldo even told me that they were very upset because Joe Messino cooperated, told uh, against Vito, their boss up there. And after that, they paid the money. But once Vinny was off the streets and that following year when Michael was running things, that's when they broke off from us. But I'm sure they're recognized, definitely. And you know what? They conducted like the mafia should be ran. So 
is what it is. We have uh, Chucky Baby, another donation. Thank you. Ever meet Barney? No, I never had the pleasure of meeting him. When I was out, he was just coming home from jail. But I met his kids. We used to work out at Omni Gym, which one of his brother-in-laws owned. And uh, it was a gym in um, Nourishell. Was it? No, not Nourishell. Uh, uh, where is it? Westchester, but no, oh, going oh, into Westchester. Pelham. Oh. It was in Pel Pelham was on the borderline of the Bronx, so it's not. And part of Westchester. Anyway, it was in Pelham, folks. She's aggravating me today, so um, you know, fuck. Somebody called nine one one. But uh, I don't know. we used to work out there. There was the boxing ring. Kevin Rooney would go there with some of his boxes, uh, fight against. Uh, a guy, Anthony Fiorino, who had, was running the gym. He had some boxes there. And um, that's where I met Barney's kids. But they were younger, much younger, but I never had the pleasure of meeting him. Oh, what's this? I remember growing up how successful the mob was in small to midtown cities. Maybe that's why they'll have to do it to survive in 2003 without murders. Yeah, they're doing it without murders. They're high, going under the radar, but things are drying up for them out there. So, you know, it's hard to make a dollar unless you do things legally where, you know, they still have unions. They still have their wayward in there. And we'll see. We'll see what happens with the mob. But mostly they're underground. But you have the buffoons out there like the Michael Noses of the world that just don't know what the hell they're doing. And because of that, that's why it's helping with the demise of the mafia and going on social media, too. It's so not Montreal, a good look. Montreal Bulldog. Hey, Dom, do you have any stories about Hector Pagan? I was with Hector in uh, the Witsack unit in one of the facilities. And, uh, yeah, no, I have some stories about him in the in the institution, uh, what he said. He was mostly um, taking a lot of sleeping pills in there. I guess, you know, they kept him pre-medicated. Uh, but there was spurts where, you know, the medication or well, he didn't take it for a few days and you saw him, you know, come to life. Seemed like a nice guy. Um, funny at times, would hang out and, you know, good sport. So why did Vinny choose Mikey Nose as the underboss if Mikey's such a buffoon? Is it because he could control him? Yes, absolutely. Vinny felt uh, he would have Michael's loyalty and it's just another person in that position. So that's what he did. He had him in that position. I'm sure maybe if Bruno was home at that time, he would have put Bruno in that position. But Michael was close with him, and um, he felt he could control him. As long as Vinny was there, nobody would challenge it and keep him there. But the only problem Vinny had was getting messages, because usually a lot of messages will go to the underboss and then to the boss. And that's where Vinny had a lot of concerns, because Michael was never accurate. So Patrick Connor says, Dom, uh, rest in peace to your cat. Have an Irish wake for her. Play music, get drunk, dance, cry, laugh, sing, and drink. More respect. Thank you. Appreciate it. And I appreciate that. Thank you. Xavier James. Larry Massa had over 20 hits. Larry's a real nice guy. His love was crazy. Yeah, he is a nice guy. I like him. Bill, thank you for the contribution. Hey, Dom, what was prison like? Was it stressful, a guy looking to attack each other, or was it just people getting on with it? Um, Lewisburg, when I was up there, was a dangerous place. If you mind your business, if you have guys who go with homosexuals, you have an issue. You have issues. Uh, guys that gamble, there's usually issues because they can't pay debts or they get beat, so there's an issue. You have guys um, who are doing drugs, issues. Guys drink, issues. If you stay away from those four things, it's easy. You have to be respectful. You have to be mindful of other people. And, you know, especially in the penitentiary where just stepping on somebody's foot and not saying you're sorry, especially if you didn't realize it, because they might get delusional. Oh, this guy, I don't like him anyway. He stepped on my foot. He didn't say anything. There's going to be an issue, so. You always have to be mindful, say, excuse me, pardon me, my bad. You know, uh, things happen. So as long as you conduct yourself like a man, you shouldn't have any problems. 
Tony Montana. Dom, tell a story about Kevin Kelly, Westies. There is nothing about him. Okay, we'll do, but we haven't, you don't like saying do, thank I you do. for the contributions. We just got another one. Give me a second. But Dom, uh, Will Mossy, but Dom, if Montreal is no longer part of the commission, recognized family, how can their guys be recognized at Cosa, as Cosa Nostra members? Cheers from Romania. Romania in the house. Yes, thank you. Um, there is no more commission. There's no commission, folks. There's no commission. The bosses nowadays will not get together. Genevieve won't even meet with anybody. They don't even know who's running the show out there. But I do, and I'm not going to expose it. I'll wait till those people who are empowered pass away. Uh, um, Maddie, I'm not done. I know, I know. So may I? Don't, folks, wait. I'm taking the bottle from a, because we're going to have a fight tonight, and I'm not fighting. <laughs> not got on it. They, Maddie asked for permission. Give me, let me, give me, I want to taste it. I want to taste it. Look, look how quick she drank that shit. Oh my God, I'm fucked tonight. <laughs> uh, that's a good thing. Man shot. Go to manshot.com. Be like a team. Um, so we have uh, I think Tony, we might have passed. It. Go ahead. Tony Gaffer, uh when you were out at a club, did you search for some fight then or did it come to you? Tony, I never I wasn't a bully. I didn't search for any fights. Um it, it would come to me. Now, if I was with people, like one night I was with PJ, Nicholas Piscotti, a uh, kid from the neighborhood, uh, Michael Panini was with Tommy, Michael Panini was me mugging him. Big fight ensued in the joint. We crippled them, but I wasn't one. And another fight, another instance. And I'll go into these stories later. I was walking and waiting for my uh, girlfriend to come out of the bathroom. I'm walking out, some guy says, hey, nice ass. I'm like, pal, that's my girl. I don't care, nice ass. Then there's a fight. But I didn't look for fights. I wasn't a bully. If it came to me, I didn't back down, though. When I drink, I like to have a good time. I like to laugh, joke. And I know what I'm capable of doing, so it even I refrain even more so from putting up my hands back then. Okay, so enough said, said Domenico. Parli Italiano. I think you mentioned your family is from Napoli area. Uh, yes, um, half, uh, actually three quarters, my one grandmother is Sicilian, the rest are not let on. So I was uh, we got on another camera. contribution by Tony. Okay, but I was asked to go on camera, so hold my team. Oh, when you were out in a club. Oh. Show. <laughs> okay, here's Maddie. A girl and her dogs. <laughs> those are those were my four dogs. Um, we're down to three. Yes. Uh oh. Okay, yeah, no, we did that one, Tony. So, Tony, thank you again for the, all the contributions. Greatly appreciated. Uh, Pelham Bay. It was Pelham Bay. No, Omni Gym was in Pelham. Oh, yeah, Pelham. That's right. I'm sorry. My bad. It was in Pelham. Right off the hutch. Yes, sir. You know, right by the car wash. See? Ah, memories. That, those were the days. Those were the days. We would sit in that gym. We'd go work out. Four or five hours. I remember one time, folks. Vinny and I are working out for the first time. So I tell him, do me a favor. Let's go. He gets under 225, does it for about six reps, puts it in. And it wasn't an easy six. It was a light six. So I go under, and I'm pushing. Ah, oh, ah. Oh. I'm at about my fourth rep, and I'm, I'm shaking. I have my arm shaking, and he grabs it. We rack it. I say, okay. He goes up to 275, and he's shaking, but he gets it. He gets it. He was strong for just starting out. I said, you know what? I'm going to try 315, spot me. We put 315, that's three plates on each side. So I said, all right, break it. I always had somebody breaking it because of my shoulders, breaking it out of the rack. So he breaks the bar out of the rack. It's on me, and I let it come down fast. Now, I rep 315 anywhere from 8 to 10 reps. So, boom, it comes on my chest. Let it hit hard. And I'm like, I go up and I put it back down. I'm like, Vin, help, help. He's trying to lift and I'm pushing down. I'm holding it down. He's lifting. My whole body's coming up. Like he's deadlifting me and the weight. All of a sudden, he notices. He lets go. He said, Bo, that's fucked up. That's fucked up. And then I lifted. I put it in the rack. 
It was just funny. I just had, I am nervous. <laughs> I was going to get killed with the weights. Justin but. B, thank you for your contribution. Dom, two questions. One, is Vinny Jr. or any of his other kids straightened out? Two, how much coke did you and Vinny and Bruno do together? Uh, Vinny, Bruno, and myself never did coke. None. Zero. Um, his kids, no. None of them are straightened out. None of them are in the life. They, uh, they learn from their father's mistakes, which I'm glad they did. NYC313, are you going to talk about the Blue Thunder story you've been told you? Yes, I will talk about the Blue, Th Blue Thunder story, Al Patone. Um, they were very, very close. Uh, they made tons and tons of money. They, they had a massive, massive case. Uh, Ra Rob Santucci said, I sent you a picture on Instagram of, Vito, of Vito's. It's the only store left in the neighborhood. It's falling apart and there's nothing left. Okay, let me see. Uh... See if I could pull it up. And then Big G says, hey, Dom, you know, did you know a guy named Didi in your family? If so, he, so he's, he, it, is he an earner or enforcer? Didi, the name sounds familiar. Um, so, but I don't know. I don't know. And Vito's is falling apart. Wow. Do what happened to, I know the father has to be long gone. Because he was old when I was out there. Is the son still running it? He has to be maybe I'm 56. He was yeah, he has to be maybe 60, 65. Hey Dom, you said months ago you'd say who the real gen I'm not saying who the real Genovese boss is. Uh, and thank you for the condolences with Fluff Fluff. I'm not saying it until they pass away. So Xavier says, um, I bought three bottles. All the flavors. I will let you know how I like them once I get them. LOL. I'm a Jameson whiskey guy, but I do like tequila. Wasn't a big vodka guy, but let's see my first drink, my first ever drink. Oh, you'll love it. You'll love it. And yes, I did see that somebody did buy three because they gave us the list with the analytics. Um, you so know what, James? I can give you some um, mixes to mix the vodka, the rosemary lavender and the Earl Grey sage. Um, are phenomenal. Yeah, we'll um, post it up. Hit me up on Instagram. Um, so definitely. But just bear with it because we had our distributor, which is RNDC, had to ship it to the liquor store first because we just brought them on. And then uh, it'll be shipped out immediately. So just bear with it. It might be a little lag time. But after that, there should, there should be no problem. Carmine Galanti, thank you for your contribution. You're clearly a good man now. I love the uploads. Well, thank you. Thank you. I try to be. I make mistakes at times. Um, you know, sometimes my mouth uh, just overrides my brain. Uh, but I try to be. I try to be fair. I try to be honest. And I try to be humble. It's difficult at times. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, did you get Chucky Baby's contribution in question? No, I don't think so. Okay. Thanks, Chucky. Um, you ever meet Vinny, Vinny Baldon? Balamante, no, I Balamante think I did. And this kid, Ernie. Yeah, I did that kind. Of, yes, oh, okay. that's an old one. Uh, Carmine Galanti. I already just okay. said that. See, how would you want another drink, honey? You could have it. God, you no, deserve it. I remember it. I came in late. Maddie, I just read it, Maddie. Oh, oh my <laughs> God. You see the arguments I have? Uh, that's why I need the patience. It's not this arguments. Is, what, why do you call okay. everything argument? How about disagreements? Ooh, what about, you know, like... Dom, <laughs> would you have a farting comp with Sammy? He's probably... Oh he'll probably win. You're probably right. Has to be at the table. Oh, has to be at the table with no manners. No, I wouldn't do that in public. Actually, in front of people, I don't... I won't. I won't do it. If I'm home alone, yeah, you'll hear him. I'll rip him. But around other guys, I mean, I get embarrassed. I wouldn't do it. I could hold it in. Did you answer the one about your buddy McManus? No. Was he tight with other made men or was he doing his own thing and your buddy alone? Uh, no, he was tight with other people. Uh, he was actually around another family. Um, and But he was with me. So, And the person who he was around... Great guy in the Bronx, and even though they were a different family, he had no power there, but we stuck up for him all the time. Albanians tried rolling, moving in on him. That's not happening. 
And then even when I had the altercation, when I went into the Albanians, when they took the money from Mark Stagg, tried shaking him down, I went there with Jimmy, big Jimmy. So we were inseparable, folks, inseparable. I'm going to tell you a big Jimmy story. And I don't think I told this one about uh, we're out one night, we're drinking all night. We end up in um, Pretty Woman's, the strip joint. So we're over there, and I'll tell a lot of stories with that place. Having a good time with the girls and, you know, whatever. We wind up leaving there. It's maybe about 4.30 in the morning. I'm driving. We're only maybe about 20 minutes away. Maybe less than that. So at that hour, there's no traffic. I get home. We lived in the same community on the water in City Island. Not City Island. Country Club the country club in the Bronx. We pull in and Jimmy, I was maybe the fourth house in off the water. He was maybe closer to the water, the eighth to 10th house in. <clears throat> I'm pulling up. The sun's just breaking, cracking, coming up. So he's all fucked up. I said, love you, pal. Kiss him. Gets out as he's getting out. Dumb. Please don't make any noise. My wife, I'm going to try to sneak in. I said, come on, Jim, I'll be quiet. You know, mm -hmm. okay. Well, I did tell, well, I'm telling it again then. Mm -hmm. So I said, I'll be quiet. As I'm pulling away, he's walking up his stairs. I start beeping on him, Jimmy, see you tomorrow. Beep, beep, beep. And he's shaking his head. He's pointing to me. I'm hysterical. Remember, we're both drunk, drunk, drunk. I pull into my driveway, and I'm hysterical. I'm walking up the stairs hysterical. I turn the key, and I'm laughing, lock the door. I turn around, bam! I got hit in the head with a clock we had. A clock or the phone off the wall, something. I got bashed. I'm like, what the? F and I say, it's my girl. Bitch, where were you all night and this and that? I went back to the door, opened it, left. Went somewhere else, you know. I, I'm like, I gotta be a son of a bitch. So the next day, when I saw Jimmy, it's like, Dom, what happened to your eye? Huh. I said, Did you get in trouble that night? He said, No, no, she was out cold. You didn't get me busted. I said, Well, hey, that's what happened. I, well, he started laughing uncontrollably. He's like, Good, you deserve it. That's what you get, and that's what I got. It backfired. So, okay, so you have um, um, some more contributions popped up. I yeah, think. but you need to um, mm. hire these guys for uh, your um, for for your marketing team. The truth says, Dom, please don't send anyone a signed bottle of us unless they agree to film a video enjoying it profusely, <laughs> thanking you for it. Thank you. And then the other one says, um, sign labels and frame them. That's a good idea. That's a good so idea. A that's a good ideas. idea. Thank you, guys. Guys, and, I like that. That was good. That's that's good. That's good. And like the truth, I think a lawyer in um, Boca. So I'm going to meet up with them. He does marketing eventually. also. Yeah. I like that. Okay. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. I appreciate that. Will do. Dean Justice says UPS delivers alcohol. Okay. We'll see. We'll but no, of course, I know... Speaking with them, because I went one time, they asked what's in there. I said, a bottle. And they said, no, because the federal laws are going across state lines. Everybody wants their taxes. So I know they wouldn't allow me to do it, and they didn't. So Teddy says, I've heard you won't even get your bottle. Go read the reviews. You won't even get your bottle. Okay. All right. So uh, you have another hater just talking BS. So. Yeah, because then if you don't get your bottle, you can get your money back. Maddie, the, our company's too big to play games, so... You have uh, just idiots that want to hate because Montreal, they probably live at home with their mothers. So cornbread, Montreal wise guys are very heavy into the rig trade. Okay, rig. All rig. right. Okay. RIG. So you're talking about cranes, high, uh, big equipment. So they probably are. Um, no, Vito is good. The neighborhood's falling apart. Vito is the last old school store standing. That's a shame. That neighborhood was solid, good. I heard there's a lot of bodegas there. It's just not where it once was. But uh, everything changes in life. Look at Harlem. My day, Harlem was torn down, burnt down buildings, dangerous, uh, especially Pleasant Avenue around that area. I heard it's all yuppies now. It's all built up. The Clintons were the first ones to put their office there. So, you know, things do change. So hopefully the Bronx will change back. Oh, the Clintons. 
and since we're from Westchester County. I know. Okay. So. <laughs> I'm from Australia. Um, Debbie McGaffin, so sorry to hear about Fluff Love. Thank you. Dom, were you out when Sal the Iron Worker was hitting Montreal? But I think I was. I think I was home when he was, uh, what was it? No, 2011, I think he got killed. 2011 and 2012. No, I was still incarcerated. I wasn't home on the street. So Matthew asked, do you think the Genovese family would at least meet with the Gambinos? They seem to be a pretty low profile, higher up group. Um, I'm sure people do meet in the different crime families. Yes, the Gambinos are pretty much uh, under the radar right now. So there's possibilities, but I know the boss is not meeting with anybody. That's for damn sure. Tony, Maybe. you know what's up. Thank you. <laughs> Go find that one. Don's going to get a beating from Maddie oh. in about two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Dom, I, Dom I was watching a video last night on Bastiano and Messino. Your name got briefly mentioned. Was that enough for conviction? My name did not get briefly mentioned. They had other tapes with Vinny talking about me. And that tape was more, um, I don't know if I have that tape. But Joe asked him on a few occasions in the tape. Um, who did he said Dominic took care of it Dominic's out there if you have any money come and let Dominic get it uh, nobody's going to back Dominic down and I'm just paraphrasing from what I recall on the tapes but Joe asked him I think a few times he says that I know Dominic did it I think Ace I think Joey but I'm not sure but I know Dominic took care of it um, so so that's um, enough he just said I killed the guy so really one boss telling the other boss, I killed somebody. That's not enough to convict. Hmm. Okay. Uh, uh, Will said, Dom didn't answer my question. Montreal is not a recognized family. How can they be recognized made? Okay, how do you know they're not a recognized family? They were part of the bananas. They were recognized. So if you're part of the life, then so be it. They're not recognized. So, you know, whatever. So I can I don't know what to tell you then. <clears throat> Um, I guess they're going back and forth. All right. We have a Carmine Galanti again. In your time, what other families were Bonanos close with? Well, I can't speak for other people because I'm sure everybody was close. Everybody in the Bonanos, some people were close with Lucchese. Some people, all five families, they're close. You, you know, you have hundreds of members. You're going to get somebody who grew up with somebody. They were best friends. I know we were close. I had close ties myself with Colombo, Genovese first and foremost, and Colombos. Even though I knew people in the Gambinos, I did time with them. I didn't have any close relationships with them. I had good relations. No, I have to say I had great I, I have to retract that. I was close with Mickey Boy Paradiso and the Gambinos. Uh, Vinny was close with, I would say, Columbo's Genovese first and foremost. Remember the Genovese crime family, they would give us the tables from Rayo's. We would get 20 tables a month uh, that would go to Vinny and Vinny would disperse them as, as need be to different crime families, different people. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, at that time you couldn't get a table in there. Probably till this day, you can't get a table. Uh... Dom, did you ever know Eddie Cowboy? No. And Maxi, no. Hi, Dom. Thanks for keeping it real. Can you tell us the time that you were really scared while on the streets? Respect from Jersey. Oh, really scared. I have to say maybe I was about 10, 11 years old. And this is just, uh, we did something. It might have been Halloween when you're throwing eggs. The police came into the building. Oh, so you were a kid. Um, yeah, I was younger. Oh. Well, you, you're looking at me like a puppy dog. Because I was thinking, like, I don't know. Okay, I'll tell. Maybe his question. All right, let me. I'll tell two stories. I was a kid. Through, uh, had a cop chase me. Came into the building. Actually, went from the front to the back. I saw him in the back. He came in. But I ran up the staircases, and I heard him running behind me. What I did was I got up to like the ninth floor. He had to be like two floors behind me, on, say on the seventh. I opened up. I went, We had two entrances, two different staircases. So I opened up the door. I made sure I banged it hard so he knew it opened up. 
And then I opened up the uh, went to the other side, opened that up, banged it hard. But then I went into the um, the uh, garbage disposal room. Went over there, and I heard him run, heard him go through, and then I walked out, knocked on somebody's door who I knew on that floor. They brought me in the house and hid me out. No, uh, yeah, Ryan Bar uh, Brown, too. Uh, the other time I was scared, let's see. I was half, I would have to say... The night I had the fight with the guy, Mark, I think Sananti was his name, he wound up beating the shit out of him. And then Steven DeLuca came. He was there, older guy. Remember, I was maybe 17. And Steven had just came home from jail, 27 years old, built, built really big, had a bad reputation out there. And um, I heard he just hit somebody with a golf club. And I was nervous. That's when I saw a guy in the neighborhood. And I'm not going to mention his name. He he reminded me of this. And he actually came into the store. And he went outside to tell Stephen, don't touch this kid. Because he was also old. He's like, don't touch this kid. He had a fight. It was a fair fight, whatever he told him. And then he came back and he said, Dom, go ahead, go. You're good. So that was the time I was scared. So Ryan Brown, thank you. <clears throat> Don was a Jack Garcia who was in a bar one night when Randy said, I'm going to buy a drink for everyone except for the Fed right here. It could have been. I'm not sure if it was Jack Garcia. Jack Garcia was the guy who infiltrated Pretty Woman. So I'm not sure if it was him or not. But Randy did say that. And I think it was someplace in Queens or Manhattan. Um, yeah, I heard that story too. And we're like, why would you provoke a Fed? But everybody acts differently. We had some more contributions go by, I think. Uh, no, in, in uh, Carmine, in your time, what other family were the Bananos closest with? Did you read that one? Yeah, yeah, we, yeah I answered so, that. Yeah, so. Dom, how did you deal with the surveillance? I never used phones. Um, I would always look in my mirrors, listen to 10, 10 wins. Uh, and that's what Vinny said. Stop listening to music, especially if you're meeting somebody. And if you're driving around the neighborhood, put 10, 10 wins on. Uh, because it keeps you alert because it's so damn boring. You're going to watch your mirrors. And if you see somebody tailing you, circle around, double back, park, you know. And that's it. So I was always cautious. I didn't showboat in the neighborhood. You see the way I'm dressed now, this? With a shirt like this, hard work, mafia round table, but I wouldn't have mafia round table. But I've I would have sweat clothes on in the neighborhood. I didn't care how I dressed. So Dom, why would Mike Panini why would Mike Panini, uh, Panini hard muck PJ knowing he was made? Um so it was Michael, was Tommy was the father. So all right, got that straight. Thank you for that correction. He mean mugged him, he was high, he was all messed up on drugs, and he felt well PJ did owe owe the father money. For marijuana so um he just did it and even when uh mike panini there's two uh, contributions that came by okay even when um afterwards and i told mike come by the real estate office he did this is before the altercation and he told me he was leaving he didn't leave the club he came by I'm like mike are you out of your mind like you knew you couldn't win you know that's my brother He's like, Dom, I, I was messed up. I was messed up on drugs. I didn't realize it. I didn't, I didn't even realize what I was doing. So it happens. It happens. But um, Contribution from Can't Stop, Won't Stop. It sounds like an old school. Can't Stop, Won't yeah. Stop. Yeah. If you were privy to any stories, what was Big Trin like in the life? Can you share any stories of them? Vinny, Bruno? Vinny and Bruno may have told you. Uh, just with Big Trin, Vinny had told me he would, when he would do coke, like everybody would put it on a key, a credit card. He would put it on his hand, like a, a bunch, and just sniff it. So he said the guy was massive. So when he would party, and there was, and Vinny would see that, he'd be like, oh shit, I'm going to be out for days with him now because Vinny was his driver. So that's 
That's the only story I could tell. Dean Justice, thanks for the contribution. Don't let Maddie sit in front of the camera so we can watch her get drunk <laughs> and she can tell us how she's going to kick your ass later. Oh, oh trust no. me. No, no, she doesn't get drunk. She gets ossified. She doesn't get drunk. <laughs> she gets ossified. Especially, wait, I'm not drinking. <laughs> No, she doesn't. She doesn't get like that. I'm joking, folks. No, she she holds a liquor pretty well. So <laughs> and then I chase <laughs> then I chase her to bed. Get to bed now. Yeah, I don't. No. I don't drink to feel nice, not to get. Yes. Drunk. No. When I when I know she's feeling good, and I'm upstairs in in the bed, I have fluff fluff on me. All of a sudden, I hear crash, boom, thing, boom. She's shooting pool. So we have the pool table downstairs. I hear her shooting pool. I'm like, oh. Okay, she's feeling good. So a few nights, even when uh, I say, come on, let's drink. We'll drink. We'll tie one on. Open up the pool table. Put the music on. You know, we have a TV above the pool table. And just, it's a nice night. Calm, you know. Aww. She thought she was slick. She was practicing, too. I come down. Maybe about four months I haven't shot. And I heard her a few nights. She's going, going. She smoked my ass. I'm like, oh, Okay. So I had to go. I had to get my game again. I was shopping it up, but it was uh, good. GC, uh, Dom, what's Maddie's favorite dish and can you cook it? Oh, good question, GC. She gives me shit when I cook because I use so many pots and pans, but I clean everything behind it. So her favorite dish, she likes a penny alla vodka. And chicken? Uh, Franchise? And chicken piccata. Piccata. Uh -huh. Okay. See, now you know. But I make them phenomenal. Anybody that wants to phone. see Maddie's photo, you go on Instagram. You'll see her and I with Fluff Fluff. You'll see a side shot of her. So that's what I have to look at all the time, my beautiful wife. Check in from Brooklyn. Salute, Mr. Dom. Great content, man. Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad people are enjoying it. Um, tomorrow will probably come on maybe the same time. Uh, come, it'll either be 12 p.m. or 5 p.m. And I'll think of uh, what stories uh, I'll tell then. Um, that's about it. We'll answer a few more questions. So Kevin67, respect from Glasgow, Scotland, Dom. Freedom. Well, Scotland in the house. Thank you. We have another contribution. Uh, wizard, wizard. From guys. Bill, thank you. Would you like, who would you invite to dinner of the mobsters regardless or do you have a Mount Rushmore of mobsters? Who would I invite? I would have to say two people. Quiet Dom and Big Ernie from the Genovese. I would like to invite them. I would invite them and just sit down with them. And, and that's it. Adult dating chat we got. Okay, we don't want that. Yeah, you get some of those snippets. Yeah. Dom, why would Randy Pizzolo threaten to kidnap Vinny's kids? He ne Randy Pizzolo never threatened to kill, kidnap Vinny's kids. That was Frank Santoro. And he was said in just. He was just, he was out partying. Uh, one of Vinny's kids passed by. He said, imagine if. It was just in jet, not just, jest. I'm sorry. He's insane. They underestimate Vinny. Yeah, no, Randy didn't get killed for that. Randy got killed for just being a big mouth, making statements. He was the only killer in the Bonanno crime family. So Sal Sal Salvatore Pantano says, so I'll assume that you back a punk like Gene for views, but you can't stand behind your own guests and your own words. What are you talking about? Stand behind my own guests. And why is Gene a punk? Tell me, why is he a punk? You know, you. this is what I hate. You're going to call somebody a punk who's not a punk? He's a rat. That he is. Punk he's not. A punk means somebody who'll back down, who won't fight. Standing up, yes, I took the coward way out, but you can never call me a punk. You could put your hands on Gene and we'll see how much of a punk he is. So um bad, bad comment, bad choice of words, I should say. Carmine, Come. thank you. Scotland in the house times two. two. Keep posting and I will watch. Thank you. Thank you, Carmine. Appreciate it. And uh I'm glad uh you're on. Appreciate it. EG with cranberry lemonade and a splash of club soda. Okay, we got to try it. 
So thank you, Neil. Yeah, the the lemon, the the EG, do the rosemary lavender. Lavender that it was created for the uh, lemonade for brands. The, uh, yeah, the um, lemonade. Yeah, it's okay. really good, but it's all good too. Yeah. yeah, it's all good mix. Yeah, it's from Danny. Gene is no punk, exactly. You wouldn't say it to them either. That's true. That's true. Gene will fight King Kong. So that that you can't say. Nobody could say anything. They wouldn't. Cornbread, thank you for the contribution. Uh, let's celebrate the fifth super super on the live stream. Thank you. Wow, five super chats. Thank you. Um, yeah, the, the people. Didn't you guys see the video with Gene in, in Queens? It's a video way back, and I'm not promoting violence, but you call the guy a punk. He went into Queens in Howard Beach, and you have a group of kids, guys. Hey, you rat, you this, you that. Not one of them did shit. And Gene, you see him walking away. So, uh, come on. Come on. If anybody, those, the group of kids are punks, because I know if it was Gene back in the day, He's not going to let a, a rat walk around Howard Beach. That's not happening. He would have left him there. Um, Dom, why would Randy Pizzola threaten to kidnap Vinny's kids? Didn't happen. I already answered that. Oh. Okay. Yo, Dom, your wordplay is crazy. My wordplay, my flow you're talking about? I know. The flow is good. Thank you. So. Will you tell the story of what actually happened to Quiet Dom's son? Uh, when Dom passes away. So I give the man, I have too much respect for them, the Genovese crime family. We have Miley Cyrus, Miley Cyrus, Swollen Gums Rat. Wonderful. Miley Cyrus, you have to hide behind a woman's name and you want to call me a rat. But the, I'm okay with that. You're entitled to that opinion. But you're hiding behind a woman's name. So but they call you. Um, Dom, how long do you think you have lasted in the streets if you didn't get caught up with Vinny? I don't know. It's a, it's a revolving door. Nobody could ever tell. I was out there, so my guy, you know, when you're in a position of authority, like a captain, acting captain, on the boss. Well, the boss now is basically isolated. They protect themselves. But when you're in that capacity, the guys around you, if they're doing wrong, it's going to fall on you as well. Because you're their boss. So nobody could tell, but it would have been a revolving door for me for the rest of my life. So I'm glad that everything that happened, happened, and I'm okay with that. So Sean Miller says, Gene should chill out, though. There's always someone bigger and stronger. It's Agree. time to work smarter, not harder. Agree, 1,000%. And uh, I agree with that. <clears throat> All right. Xavier James, what people have said, on here is confused. John Panisi, who has been a member most recently of all these guys, told, oh, shucks, it just went flipping on me. See. That's all right. I'm sorry. Is it the chats come in and so it keeps. Sweetie, moving. they know. They know? I would hope so. They know better than I do. No, they're seeing it, but they're not trying to hold it. Oh, we got another uh, contribution from Tony. Thank you, Tony. Okay, go to bed now. Good show. Thank you. Well, over here, it's still early for bed, but mm -hmm. okay. We'll answer two more. Any dealings, oh, wait. Oh, any go ahead. dealings with Woodlawn section of the Bronx, Irish neighborhood, Katona Avenue, McLean Avenue, etc. Yes, we were over there with Joker Poker Machines. Uh, yes, I had some dealings. Wait, wait, wait. I saw the Miley Cyrus again. Miley Cyrus, my favorite rat YouTuber. But thank you. Th thank you. That you could say. Thank you. I appreciate it. But Miley Cyrus, come on. Um, <clears throat> you said, okay, uh, Bill, you have said that Vinny would go after you. Do you think, do you think there would be a way to resolve it before, before it escalated? Um Vinny would, listen, I'm sure Vinny would meet with me, sit with me. Um, I know Vinny. Vinny would be okay. Vinny's not just going to attack. Vinny would wait. Vinny would wait till everything calms down. 
And when nobody expects it's going to be him, we'll wait till something occurs where maybe I have an argument with somebody on YouTube, something happened. That's when Vinny would strike, when I would least expect it. Vinny would definitely do it. So hold on. Wait, I got a phone call from somebody. Hey, pal. No, thank you. I'm live right now on YouTube. I'm talking. <laughs> thank you. I'll call you after I'm done. All right. See, my boy Mikey Scars giving me a call, telling me about my kitty. So he said, sorry. Thank you. William, William at Brooklyn says, people are trashing your business with EG Vodka. Uh, I don't know who's trashing it, but I'll tell you one thing. Who's ever going to trash it? Counsel for EG Vodka will be going after them. And uh, if they want to say it's something nefarious against EG Vodka that's not true, they're going to have headaches. So um, you're going to get haters. If haters want to hate, hate me. Don't hate my sponsor. Uh, but... I was just told to say anybody out there saying anything nefarious about EG Vodka, counsel for EG Vodka will be going after them. So for defamation. And that's it. So, but I could tell you one thing, EG Vodka, great taste in vodka. People, when you get it, try it and let me know. Let me know. Put it out there. The vodka has been around for about 13 years. Uh, it's distilled in Portland, Oregon. Listen. How could they trash it? We are in the JW Marriott. We're in Burn Steakhouse, which we're the number one selling vodka in Burn Steakhouse. That's a top steakhouse in Tampa. Uh, we're at the Sheridan in Orlando, where we were in 60 ABC liquor stores prior to myself coming on board. We're in, we're working out something to get into all Hooters. Um, we have the Hard Rock in AC, Atlantic City, looking to bring us there. We're just waiting for a distributor. We have stilettos, strip clubs. I mean, we're in too many places. We're out there already. We beat in a national taste test. We beat Grey Goose four out of five times in a blind taste test. We have awards. Go on the website. So people that are talking shit, you better watch what you talk. You have to watch it. Like I said, by counsel from EG. Anything nefarious that's said about the company, about partners on EG, there'll be consequences. There'll be legal ramifications behind it. So, Right. So Carlos is handsome, said, what is your opinion on the short James Proctor just made? It seems very well done. Is it accurate? Uh, I didn't see the short, so I can't answer that. So I'll, I'll check it out. Matter of fact, let me see it now while I'm on. Might as well. James Proctor did a so show. So Tony Palmieri says, Don, did you see the picture with Vinny and the Mexican Mafia? Yes, I did. And we'll go into that later on because I got some inside scoops. Okay. Is this the show? Let's see. Genovese Associated Bronx Fact. Which short are you talking about? Is it Genovese Associate, Bronx Faction? So let me know, and I'll play it, and I'll answer it live. Did another contribution just pop up? No. Mm. Uh, Dom, you said that you were in with Bobby Luisi. Yes. What's your opinion of him? I like Bobby. I like Bobby. Funny guy, wasn't confrontational, very passive, knows the Bible inside and out, upside down. And... Um, I'll go into a Bobby Luisi story. I'm in touch with him too. I haven't, I know he contacted me. I didn't have time, but maybe we'll get him on the show as well. We'll do something with him. So Jeff says, just for the record, Westchester is not upstate. Yes, it is. You know, you know why we know that? Because we're from, I'm from Westchester. So I know what upstate is and I know what Westchester County is. Just like you know your Bronx, your area. You're fighting with somebody who's from the area. I know my area. Okay, William at Brooklyn said, they said EG Vodka guy is going to jail and you are not shipping Vodka out. Well, that's a, <laughs> two lies. Two lies. So, again, counsel, counsel for EG Vodka. And you know what? You, people will see. Just give it time. I think they had a certain amount of time to comply, but... Council for EG Vodka will be going after anyone who passes nefarious statements about the owners of EG Vodka. And uh, that's it. Or, or the Vodka brand itself. But like I said, we're out there. We're with the second largest distributor 
in the country. So we won with Southern, but Southern had too many different vodka skews. So we went with the second, and um, that's R it, R and DC. So um, try it, you'll like it, and that's it. So with that, I'm looking. Did you see with that James Proctor video? Who? They asked. I'm asking you. It's the night of August fifth, oh, 1988, here. at the Sandy Shoes Villa in Lauderdale by the Sea, Florida. In room 708 is an intoxicated George Kehoe. A drug deal is being planned where 22-year-old Dominic Shikali, along with two Genovese associates from the Bronx, 47-year-old Ernie Corraluzzo and 40-year-old Vinny Foresto, would buy 200 pounds of marijuana from George Kehoe. However, Kehoe had revenge on his mind. Shikali had robbed Kehoe of two ounces of cocaine five months earlier in March. The three men walk into the motel room and Kehoe pulls out a gun, which Corraluzzo knocks out of his hands. Kehoe boats for the door and Dominic pulls out a 25 caliber pistol and fires two bullets, which hit and kill Kehoe. Then the three associates take Kehoe's body and dumps him in a canal west of Boca Raton, where he was wrapped in a towel, sheets, and a shower curtain. His legs were tied with ropes. The 25 year old's body was not found for six weeks. Um, it's the night of August 5th, 1980. Uh, they weren't picking up marijuana from uh, George, not to my knowledge. Uh, George didn't get a chance to pull out a gun, but he did have two guns on him. So it's pretty accurate from what James said. Um, so 702, I thought it was 3, 307, but... Uh, he probably knows better than me. Great, great, nice video with the photos and everything. I don't know. I have to call him and see where he, he got all those photos. But good photos with everything. So, um, yeah, no, he's pretty accurate. <clears throat> so, a Danny and, uh, Pusillo said, honestly, Dom wasn't bullshitting. No hangover. It's true. Thank you, Danny. Thank and, you. And, and the reason why there's no hangover is because um, I do the marketing for it. Um, and we've been to several high-end hotels that are selling it now. So mm -hmm. it's legit, guys. Um, uh, we don't have to. It is, it is or a certified. It's certified organic gluten-free. So, uh, But you can't say everybody. Somebody might drink something else. They might be drinking it with Red Bull. And the Red Bull gives you the hangover, the sugars. So if you're drinking it straight, nine times out of ten, you're not going to have a hangover. But listen, sometimes you get a hangover. It's not even from the liquor. It's just from the other stuff you're drinking. So, um, But with that, folks, um, the vodka is excellent. Yes. So about somebody, uh, all the nefarious nonsense that's being said by the haters out there, the you know people want to knock. There'll be ramifications from EG's counsel. They'll be going after people with no, saying things that are nefariously on the internet. So be careful what you say. And trust me, trust me, my partners, wealthy people, wealthy people, they'll spend tens, hundreds of thousands of dollars oh, or more just to go after people that want to try to defame tell them, lies. tell lies. Um, it's not going to happen. So... And guys, just thank you so much for um, my Kayla, our Fluff Fluff, aka Fluff Fluff shit bags. Um, it was a hard day today. Yep. Yes, it was. It was and it's day. not shit bags, my shit bag, my little shit bag, I would call it. It is also my father's birthday today. And I just got news right now. I lost a childhood friend. Four heart attacks. Oh, James. James Bates. He didn't make it. Uh, well, uh, James Bates, to your family, uh, my condolences. Uh, I met him on a few occasions. Funny guy. Had a few drinks, a lot of laughs. Oh, and you never know, folks, when your time's up. That's why life is too short. Enjoy it. Uh, stay strong. And uh, that's it. Until tomorrow. Let me say, anyone that knocks EG knows nothing about the vodka. Thank you, Neil. That's so true. So true. But you're going to have the haters out there, but there'll be definitely uh, retractions if anybody said anything. If not, don't worry. Um, we have the legal counsel is going after them. And the counsel is Damon and Wade at a West Palm Beach, very prominent law firm. And uh, they'll do what they have to do. 
But until then, everybody have a great evening. Thank you so much for all the contributions tonight. Thank you. Thank you so much. And the love, the support. Got to give it to everybody. Peace out. Much love.